We, we know some of the uh, effects of it coming to the United Nations uh, that has always been talking about a sustainable and inclusive development. But then today we see nations, we see countries separated along uh, political lines, uh, uh, economic lines. But then uh, there's this great divergence between the rich and the poor. And this, of course, so these are some of the uh, criticisms of, of yeah. this global cooperation. So what have you to say uh, regarding this? Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. And uh, uh, my greetings to all co-panelists also. Uh, yes, we all agree, as uh, Yulia, Madam, has said, and uh, uh, Dr. Clifton, uh, we are in a state of transformation. Uh, the world is uh, changing. Change is always a constant thing, but the pace of change that is taking place now uh, is much greater and uh, almost becoming unmanageable. And that is why we need a cooperation at global level. You see, we have had uh, several crises in quick succession. Uh, economic slowdown, then COVID pandemic at global level, and now the wars going on and civil wars in several places, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, in my view, uh, as uh, Dr. Clifton mentioned, we have to be uh, see the crisis as an opportunity for rebuilding our vision, rebuilding our policies, rebuilding our societies. And uh, that is what uh, we should take this as an opportunity. And I am happy that such discussions are being uh, held uh, to formalize a way uh, to this transformation. Now, just see that the world order is changing from unipolar to multipolar world. Now, it's no more a uh, unipolar world or even bipolar world now. And uh, there are aspirations of even emerging economies uh, to take uh, lead in their own way uh, in shaping the world. And we, we cannot deny them these powers, uh, their rightful place in the committee of nations. And this is the biggest challenge, that uh, there is a sort of, uh, what I call is, it's a leadership deficit uh, that we are facing in the world because the so-called uh, uh, world leaders, uh, uh, self-proclaimed world leaders also, they have not been coming uh, to the help of humanity whenever a crisis comes. India uh, produced uh, billions of and uh, billions of vaccines at, uh, when the pandemic is struck. But uh, this is the way that uh, a global challenge has to be made at global level, keeping the whole humanity in mind. You see, it's very soon we are going to have 8 billion people, maybe by next month itself, on this planet. 8 billion. And we have the challenge is that we, we must offer them a peaceful living. We have to offer them education, housing, food, shelter, everything. And that is the biggest challenge. And uh, as Julia Mada mentioned, that you cannot compromise uh, sovereignty. And uh, you see, you see uh, so far, what has been happened is that uh, one size fits all kind of economic policies have been thrust upon uh, nations uh, to follow. And uh, we, we are seeing the result uh, that is there. So uh, in fact, uh, that is why we need freedom to design our own future, freedom to design our own policies that suit us. The applicability of policy has to be localized. So we have to have a global vision, but local action also. You see, uh, and we cannot have uh, with these kind of policies, what has happened is that there have been islands of uh, uh, prosperity uh, around the world. Some few companies taking over uh, all the riches of the uh, world. So uh, we cannot have that uh, islands of uh, uh, prosperity 
And uh, we Leah, or in the just concluded United Nations General Assembly, the UN chief Antonio Guterres uh, uh, pinpointed that uh, there is a great gap or a divergence between uh, the uh, uh, developed world and the developing world. I want us to analyze uh, what has happened to this dogma of uh, humanity, of humanity that today we see uh, the uh, develop this gap. How can we uh, bridge the gap existing between the developed and the uh, underdeveloped world? Well, thank you, madam, uh, for that uh, lovely question. And uh, thanks to Clifton, sir, Julia, madam, and Eddie, sir, for giving their very good opinions. Uh, uh, I, you, you said that uh, gap between developed and developing. Personally, I would like to ask, is America not developing? Have they stopped developing? Are they fully developed and there is no need for further developing? The whole world is developing world. If you see, till your problems are solved, till each and every individual realizes his or her full potential on earth, we are still in a state of developing. So calling themselves to be developed and uh, others as uh, less developed are developing, uh, this is uh, not proper. The gap is between the uh, education level, between the resources availability, uh, between the attention that you give to certain societies. You see, uh, uh, le since we are talking about uh, on an African channel and uh, with reference to Africa, I would like to mention two facts. If you see Africa, the whole continent is much bigger than India plus China plus whole of Europe. Such a big landmass. It has got 1.3 billion people in Africa. 1.3 billion. And uh, another fact is that 60% uh, of this 1.3 billion population is in young uh, working age population. Where else do you find that? The whole, uh, in the Western world, the population is aging. They don't have uh, manpower. Again, you see, Africa is the land of opportunity for all future generations because it has so vast untapped potential, both in production as well as in consumption. The only difference is that we need to uh, upskill the manpower, the young manpower that uh, it has in uh, Africa and uh, utilize their untapped potential for the whole humanity. We need to bridge that digital divide. That is the gap. Certain societies, they are using digital technologies, artificial intelligence, everything to their advantage. But uh, so many others, they don't have even access to it. So uh, this is the gap. And what is the root cause of this is, you see, we, we, we could develop a vaccine for so many diseases for coronavirus also. But friends, there is no vaccine developed so far to combat human greed. There is no vaccine for hatred, for discrimination. And that is what is the, the gap. And uh, this is what is to be removed by promoting, uh, uplifting the sections of societies uh, that are underprivileged, that have not been attended to so far, and uh, uh, bring them at par to reduce this gap. And uh, I think uh, there is, uh, as uh, Adisa pointed out, there is. Uh, uh, enough scope for South-South cooperation also in this. And uh, uh, India uh, is always ready for cooperation with all other countries in, in that matter. And uh, skill development is the need of the hour. And second need is that if you go to the root cause of the problem, why, why we are facing all these problems, the root cause of all this is that there is lack of spirituality lack of value system, as uh, Clinton mentioned. 
the our value system uh, is not teaching us uh, love it is teaching us hatred uh, combined with social media as as was pointed out earlier earlier so we need to have a correct value system right from childhood from the school education level if you grow people we are what we are trying to do we are giving them technical skills to turn them into good human resources but uh, i would like to say that you cannot be a good human resource until you are a good human being first and and that is what is that is what is required and uh, that is the fact uh, uh, that we have that gap we have to fulfill the gap in values and Afrique Media Le monde c'est nous